Today I am visiting Art on the Mall, another beautiful day, and I'm here with Brenda. And like I say, I kind of walk along and there's something that just grabs me and says, come in, come in. And your piece, your pieces did that. Tell me how you created this. I think it's birch, right? Right. It's um, primarily birch bark. I collect most of the materials myself and the birch I take from felled trees. And so I'm looking for a piece at the right stage of decay and something that's interesting and that will hold up when I get it back to the studio. Yeah. Um, and then I've used various techniques to reinforce. Um, there's, well, if you look at some of the pieces, there's cheesecloth, acrylic mediums, um, copper and patina finishes. And then some of the other materials are manzanita, driftwood. So primarily things I've collected myself and I, I call it functional right. art. Right. And, and a lot of this all lights up as well. Yes. Yep. And some of them um, you can use even to read by. Most of them are accent lights or, you know, the little ambient light that you need. Now I see some, is that grapevine that I'm looking at on one of the pieces? But it looks like it's all gold and kind of coppery. Uh, it is grapevine tendril. And then I've stitched that in with some caning material. There's uh, copper and patina finishes. Some of the finishes I developed um, with acrylic mediums, so some of them are uniquely mine. <laughs> so, so Fred, well, right, right. When you walk through the woods, do you know what you're going to do? Like when you collect a piece, is it something that just catches your eye or do you have a purpose for it when you go for your walks? Uh, well, it really started with being intrigued by the material. I'm also a painter mm. and I would be out in the woods um, doing sketches and little paintings and I just, I was fascinated by birch and it's been really interesting to learn more about the material. I was just drawn to it and then just um, learning about uh, the ways you know, different indigenous cultures have used it over the years. It's called the giving tree. Oh, uh, well, you know, it's I've tried to pick out my favorite piece. I really can't, but I do kind of love this piece right here. This is something beautiful. How did you make that? Well, as I said, this started with, um, I do look for unique pieces to begin with, and then it has to be strong enough um, to hold up until I get it back to the studio. It's fairly fragile when I'm collecting it. It's one of a kind, one of a kind. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Brenda. I appreciate it. Thank you. I'm here with Matthew from Theodore Woodworks. And where are you from, Matthew? We're from the Lansing area. And you said you already got two invites to other shows. What does that mean to you? Oh, it's wonderful. It's, it's nice when people uh, realize the work that you put into it. And uh, it's, it's great that that's recognized. Now, Matthew, this caught my eye walking by because I love baskets, but most of the baskets that I have are woven. And upon closer look, these are solid. They're a solid wood basket. I asked you if it was inlay, but it's not. So what's the process? Um, actually, they're all made out of hardwoods, and we don't stain or dye anything. We just use the woods in their natural colors, and uh, we laminate the strips of woods together to make a blank and then put a pattern on there and uh, the pattern when we cut it gives us a series of rings which we then use to build the bowls. Now you're Matthew, it's Theodore Woodwork, so what's the tie-in? Did you, did you learn this craft from your dad or grandpa? I did, yeah. My dad uh, got me started in woodworking when I was a boy and I've uh, been doing it ever since and really enjoy it and uh, when we started the business thought about uh, what I should name it and really didn't have to think too long. Named it after my dad because he got me started in this. Yeah. And how important is the uh, the Art in the Mall uh, kind of art 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 festival for you? Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it's been a wonderful weekend all the way around. We've sold uh, quite a few pieces here. We've also handed out a lot of business cards too. And uh, it, it's a great thing really for the, the entire area. Uh, you got a lot of wonderful artists that come here and um, it's, it's great for the economy and great for the area. Yeah, I've seen some beautiful art, yours being some of it. Thank you so much for talking with me today, Matthew. I appreciate it. Art on the Mall with Iana, Iana, and you are from? 
Kalamazoo, Michigan. And you are an artist in the true sense of the word. I mean, all different creations here. We've got some, uh, what do we call these, collages in the back? You said it's mixed media, right? Yes. Um, so we've got collage. Um, this is printmaking with embroidery. And what have we got here? Tell me, tell me the process. This is a screen print on fabric. Um, so I took this image from a photograph. I, I burned a screen printing screen in a dark room. Um, oh, wow. um, and then I print it with metallic ink, fabric ink. Yeah. So Iana, when you decide that you're gonna do a collage, like let's say this one right here, when you're gonna do a collage, I mean, it's so much going on. Where do you begin? Do you have an idea of where you're going or do you know exactly what you want it to look like? Um, I never know what I want it to look like and I really let the materials guide my process. Um, and I collect imagery from all over. And so many pins and jewelry. You must be like creating all the time. I am, <laughs> yeah. So what's the best part of being here at Art on the Mall? Uh, I think seeing all the locals. Um, today has been a great day. Um, everyone's dressed up. Yeah. It's really fun. All right. Well, thank you so much for talking with me, Ann. I yeah. appreciate it. You're welcome. There's so much color, I'm attracted to color. What can I say? I'm here with Marshila. How are you, Marshila? I'm well, how are you? Well, I'm doing great. This piece caught my eye. Now, you said it's an acrylic, because I said that's not glass. Like, when you look at it, it, it kind of gives the impression it's under glass, but it's not. Correct. This is actually an epoxy resin, and it is a, an acrylic paint uh, on paper, and then affixed to the wood panel, and then coated with a, an epoxy resin on top. But how do you get it so it's so crystal clear, smooth. Um, that's the critical part where I take a, a resin mixture and a hardener mixture, um, mix it half and half, and then I pour over and evenly distribute it out. Oh. And then the next step is to get a blowtorch and try to blow. <laughs> every bubble, every little indentation, every little dust particle has to be taken off and then cured for like 24 to 48 hours. Well, I was going to say, because I can tell that, that you did it. There, I don't see any bubbles or anything. And now the rest of these are on canvas. So, you know, like this one almost reminds me a little bit of a beehive but when you when you kind of come up with an idea do you know what you're gonna do and do you start with color do you start with design first you know I really start with the color combination and just work it as I you know as I'm working on the painting I just play with it I like to explore with movement I like to explore with color schemes and I just go from there and see what happens <laughs> well Mashila keep doing the work I love it thank I love you. it thank you so much for talking with me today Support for Kalamazoo Lively Arts is provided by the Irving S. Gilmore Foundation, helping to build and enrich the cultural life of greater Kalamazoo.